If you like a good movie and love a tasty treat, you could win one of three HD flat screen TVs. This is your chance to snack, watch, and win. Buy a three pack of Act Two popcorn or a 10 ounce Crunch and Munch, plus a Hershey's milk chocolate or cookies and cream bar. Write your name and number on the back of the receipt. Drop it off at Pritchard's, Robinson Road, or Caleb Bahamas Marathon Mall. Then order a movie from Rev TV On Demand, Channel 500, for your chance to snack, watch, and win. Enter today. Promotion ends August 30th. Tonight on NB12, you'll hear from the man in charge of the Defense Force. I am eagerly awaiting the report. He talks to us about the investigation into alleged abuse of Cuban detainees. Meantime, a group of Cubans making new allegations. What you hear may shock you. Another ring of thieves busted by police. Plus, the Minister of Education expects all teachers to report to work as usual on Monday, despite threats of industrial action. Those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Nakia DeVoe, and this is NB12. Joining us here at Cable 12 Studios, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force has been under the spotlight as one of the agencies at the center of an investigation into abuse claims made by Cuban detainees back in May. However, so far, nothing has been heard from the head of the RBDF. Today, Defense Force Commodore Roderick Bow sat down with our Christina McNeil to explain how the force is handling the probe into the role its officers may have had in the alleged abuse at the detention center. Commodore Roderick Bow recognizing that while international forces may be calling for an expedited investigation into abuse claims at the Carmichael Road Detention Center, the investigation will not be rushed. Bo says it will be a thorough investigation and then the report will be passed on as soon as possible. We understand the international pressures that are uh, being brought to bear on this matter um, and so we, we, are tr we are trying to do our best in ensuring that things are, are done properly and not just done because of the international pressures. We want this case expedited, but we don't want to make it seem as though this is the only case that we do have. Uh, the other author authorized officers are hearing cases, uh, the lines are long, and um, it's like it's similar to what's going on in, in, the, in the present court system at um, uptown, you know, where cases are, are delayed and Aside from the case backlog in the Defense Force's justice system, the Commodore says another delay may be in securing a translator for non-English speaking individuals involved in investigations. Several Defense Force officers are being questioned in the alleged abuse probe. Bo says they have been transferred to other areas while the investigation is ongoing. But Bo was not able to offer much else in terms of details surrounding the inquiry. I've seen the pictures in the papers um, uh, this week. Um, I am eagerly awaiting the report to determine what may have transpired. Um, and if there is any wrongdoing, then we will have to proceed with um, our rules and procedures as laid down in the act. I'm not at liberty to divulge anything at this stage because nothing has been brought to my attention at this time to say otherwise because I'm a part of the appellate process and to avoid any um, bias in the system. I have to avoid having contact with the investigation. If found guilty of being in breach of the Defense Act, Bo says officers could be discharged from the force. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Christie yesterday told reporters he had no problem making the report into those abuse allegations public. Once the investigation is complete, as long as the release of the report would not violate the rights of those involved. Bo agreed that there should be no difficulty making details public once the proper approvals are secured. Um, the findings will be placed before the, the Ministry of National Security, who will take it before the Security Council, National Security Council, and the determination will be made by that, by that council. I suspect um, no one is willing to hide or the report, I think, once it's made available to the National Security Council. I think they will do their due diligence in making sure that it's, it's available. 
Concern over the veracity of the allegations laid out by Cuban detainees has been far-reaching, making international headlines. In his 31 years on the Defense Force, Bo says he has never seen another incident of this magnitude. This is probably the most attention paid to an, in, an incident. Um, I have not, in my 31 years, I don't recall seeing something of this magnitude. Um, just trying to think back, but I, I can't recall. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell has indicated the investigation report is expected to be complete within the next month. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Mitchell is responding to those claims from Washington, D.C. He sent out a release today once again describing the actions of the Free National Movement as sickening. He accuses the FNM of sabotaging the ongoing effort to craft a fair, reasonable and transparent policy around these issues without prejudice to any inquiry and its results. Mitchell says that any public comment or disclosure is premature and may be prejudicial. He called the conduct of the FNM shameful and once again accused the opposition of siding with those who would damage the Bahamas. Well, the democracy movement, the Cuban group which has been at the helm of the protest over the alleged abuse, making new allegations. And these latest claims are also quite serious. Group spokesperson Ramon Sanchez claims that over the past 11 months, Cuban detainees at the Carmichael Road Detention Center have also been sexually abused and subject to what are usually considered acts of torture. He claims the group has proof and will reveal it to members of the international media this week. We have several testimonies of different people, women and victims and witnesses, uh, regarding uh, the mistreatment of the people inside the uh, detention center. So far, the group has only voiced concerns about Cuban detainees allegedly being beaten by Defense Force officers after a video purporting to show such events was aired on a Spanish-language TV station. But today, Sanchez said the alleged mistreatment goes even further than that. He claims that the female detainees were taken advantage of by the guards. Sexual harassment, um, sexual favors in exchange for water and food, and this kind of treatment by the guards, the guards, some of the guards uh, uh, would would have some kind of sexual contact through the fence. Some of the women uh, were made to to uh, dance uh, nude uh, in order for them to obtain uh, bottles of water or food. Sanchez says that some of the Cuban detainees have even alleged that guards delivered electric shocks to some of them. Now, none of the alleged victims will be present at the press conference in Miami on Thursday morning. Sanchez says most of them were sent back to Cuba while others are still here at the detention center. But he says the group managed to contact the Cubans making the allegations and record their stories. There were electro, electro shocks applied to people after wetting their bodies. And they wet the, the person's body and then applied uh, electricity. These are people who have been interviewed and, are, and their testimonies are, are recorded. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has refused to comment on these latest allegations or anything regarding the democracy movement. Well, in other news, police cracking yet another stealing ring that targeted unsuspecting vehicle owners. Police say the thieves collected dozens of purses, cellular phones and jewelry before taking off in a stolen vehicle. Paige McCartney has all those details. Police say they've already arrested three people in connection with the stealing ring yesterday afternoon at a motel in central New Providence. Two men and again a woman is involved. Police have said that increasingly more and more women are participating in armed robberies, housebreakings and incidents of stealing. Officer in charge of the Eastern Division, Superintendent Elaine Sands, said the trio mainly targeted women. As you can see, we have at least about 24 handbags and purses jewelry, cell phones, etc., was found in the vehicle and also as a result of searches, conducting searches of the various homes, these items were recovered. Police say the culprits used this stolen Honda Odyssey as well as a silver Honda Sabre to commit the crimes over the course of a couple of months. According to Sands, stealing is like a job for these criminals who went to beaches around the island where there were parked cars. But she said in some instances, the victims were held up on the streets. These items were stolen mostly from stealing from vehicles 
a number of vehicles were broken into throughout New Providence, mm -hmm. especially uh, along the beach areas. And so these were taken from some person's vehicle, stolen from vehicles. The trend is again prompting police to renew their call to motorists regarding leaving valuables in plain sight even in locked vehicles. This is the reason why we constantly advise residents who are attending the beaches or even going into a store, wherever you go, you take your valuables with you. Do not leave your valuables visible on a car seat. Police say if you recognize any of these items that were recovered as your own, to contact them as soon as possible. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney.